Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today we're at East Coast Supercharging in Cream Ridge, New Jersey. These guys build some of the fastest Corvettes in the world, but we aren't here with the Corvette. We're here with a stock 2008 Honda Civic Si. Why, you might ask? Well, you guys asked me to test a fuel additive to see if it actually creates more horsepower, so we're going to test Clean Boost Max. This is a fuel supplement you add to the gas. According to the bottle, this is supposed to increase horsepower, fuel economy, and decrease emissions in gas or diesel engines. So we're specifically going to test their claims that it will increase horsepower and torque. What we're going to do is we're going to take this Honda Civic and put it on a dynamometer, also known as a dyno, to see how much power it makes before we add Clean Boost Max, and then test it again after we add it to the gas to see if there's any increase. A dyno is like a lie detector for cars. It gives the true horsepower reading to the wheels. In here we have the dyno we'll be using for the test. There are two main types of dynos. This dyno is a hub dyno. You take the wheels off and you connect it directly to your hubs. The benefit of this, there's no wheel spin and no tire friction to take into account. So this is a very accurate dyno, which is perfect for what we're doing. The other type of dyno is a rolling road style dyno. That style dyno has large drums that the tires sit in between, and that's kind of like a treadmill for cars. Since the hub dyno is so accurate, we're going to be able to use this to compare the baseline horsepower and torque readings to the Clean Boost Max horsepower and torque readings. So that's enough background information. Let's get this test started. As we get the car hooked up on the dyno, let me explain what we're doing. We're doing three baseline runs to get the horsepower and torque that the car makes without any additive in it. Then we're going to go and put the additive in the gas, drive around for a little bit, Make sure it's all stirred up, come back, and then do three more runs with Clean Boost Max in the gas. We want to see if there's an increase in horsepower and torque. If the additive works, we'll see a consistently larger horsepower and torque reading, and if it doesn't work, the horsepower and torque readings will either be the same or even less. So let's get these three baseline runs in. This car makes 195 horsepower at the engine. Any ideas of what you think it's going to be at the wheels? Here's the first run. For this run, we made 167 horsepower and 129 foot-pounds of torque. Here's run two. For this run, we made 163 horsepower and 126 foot-pounds of torque, so a little bit lower. And then here's run three. For this run, we made our lowest numbers at 161 horsepower and 123 foot-pounds of torque. So our first run in the red made the most power at 167 horsepower and 129 foot-pounds of torque. Each run after that made less and less power because heat soak, where the engine heats up and the air coming into the engine is hotter, which causes the engine to make less power. So those are the numbers we have to beat if Clean Boost Max does in fact make more power when added to the gas. Let's back out of here and add the fuel supplement to the gas. According to the directions on the bottle, you use one ounce for every 30 gallons of gas. This tank is a 13 gallon tank and it's about half full, so a half an ounce will be more than enough to add to this gas. This is all shaken up and ready to be added to the gas, and that's all it needs, which is pretty crazy. Now let's close everything up and go for a ride. All right, so now we're gonna go for a 15 minute drive to get the Clean Boost Max mixed into the gas. And we're also gonna use up the gas without Clean Boost Max that's in the fuel lines and the fuel rail. Now the instructions do say to use the additive when you go to fill up the gas tank, but we don't wanna introduce new gas into the system because that's just another variable that could make our test inconsistent. 
the new gas might give you more horsepower or it might decrease the horsepower. So we're not getting new gas. We're gonna just keep the gas in the tank and go for a ride, make sure we stir it up, and that should mix it up plenty. So after about a 20 minute drive, we are back and the additive should be plenty mixed up. So we're ready to do our final dyno runs. So we're idling the car until the engine temperature is the same as before. If the engine temperature is significantly cooler, we might make a little more power. If it's significantly hotter, we might make a little bit less power. So to make sure that we're consistent in between tests, we're going to make sure that the coolant temperature is the same. Okay, now that the engine temperature is the same as before, let's start our three pulls with Clean Boost Max in the gas and see if we actually make more power. To be honest with you, I am quite skeptical. I can't see how adding half an ounce of this stuff is going to make any difference, but we'll see. Let's start the first run. Check this out, no way. We just made 172 horsepower and 134 foot-pounds of torque, which is higher than the 167 and 129 we ran before. Okay, let's run it again and see what happens. Hundred and seventy one horsepower and hundred and thirty two foot pounds of torque. Again, higher than all the runs we did before. Let's give it one more go and see what we get. Okay, we got 172 horsepower and 132 foot-pounds of torque, which is still higher than all the runs we did before. Okay, so let's do a comparison of the horsepower numbers from our baseline before we added the fuel supplement to after we added the fuel supplement. The before is on the left and the after is on the right. The horsepower curve looks weird because the engine has VTEC, which changes the lift of the cam and the timing to give you more power. You could actually see where the power would normally drop off, but then VTEC kicks in and you get a good amount of more power. You can see in the before graph, the highest horsepower we made was 167 horsepower. And for each run, that drops, and the lowest horsepower number is 161 horsepower. For the after, the highest horsepower number is 172 horsepower. And unlike the other graph, these runs were way more consistent. It's actually impressive how consistent this graph is. Even on the third run with Clean Boost Max, the car is still making 172 horsepower, compared to before where it just dropped off. So it's clear that there is an increase of at least 4 horsepower and at most 11 horsepower when we add to Clean Boost Max. Now let's go look at torque. Again, the left is before, the right is after. You can see in the before graph the highest torque number is 129 foot-pounds of torque. And for each run that drops. And the lowest torque number is 123 foot-pounds of torque. For the after, the highest torque number is 134 foot-pounds. So it's clear there was an increase of at least 3 foot-pounds of torque and at most 11 foot-pounds of torque when we added Clean Boost Max. I want to finish off with a graph of the best run before and the best run after adding Clean Boost Max to the gas. In this graph, the thin lines represent the before and the thick lines represent the after. The blue line is torque and the green line is horsepower. You can see the clear separation for pretty much the entire curve for both horsepower and torque, which is impressive. The end result is pretty clear. When you add Clean Boost Max to your gas, you're gonna make more horsepower, more torque. So after testing Clean Boost Max, what do we think? You could come to your own conclusions and I'll put links to the graphs in the description below if you wanna further analyze it. But for me personally, we used one of the most accurate dynos at a reputable shop known around the world. We did three strong baseline runs, added the fuel supplement, got it really mixed in there good, and then did three more runs with similar weather conditions and similar engine temperature. And the results are clear. Clean Boost Max actually does what it says and creates more power. In this test, we found it could create as much as 11 horsepower and 11 foot-pounds of torque, which amazes me. Not only that, when we added the fuel supplement, the dyno runs were more consistent, which is also important. Even Doug, who's run and tuned thousands of cars on the dyno, was impressed. 
Now I'm kind of curious to see if this actually increases fuel economy like they say. The good thing about using this Honda for the test is that if it increases horsepower and torque in a Honda, it'll work for your car.